Hi everyone, Tamari here from Create Your Future. I am a Law of Assumption coach here as well as a psychologist with a master's degree. And I'm here today to answer some of your questions about manifestation and the law. So let's dive into this, guys. The first question is, can we manifest several specific people? Some say we can, some say we can't. Yes, we can. So the answer is always yes, guys. Can we? Should we? So it's always up to you. What do you truly desire? That's a better question. And the question is for you. Are you asking this because you're not sure if the law works this way or you have a belief that manifesting more than just one person is maybe wrong, right? So ask yourself this way, like where, does, where is this question coming from, okay? We can manifest and we do, guys, we do. We manifest more than just one person all the time. And I'll explain how. So every manifestation, okay, requires people. Let's say you wanna have a new job. When you shift into a state of I am working for XYZ company, right? Or I passed the interview, they love me. This state is going to influence all of these people who are making decision to employ you. So the HR manager, the technical staff, maybe the CEO themselves, okay? All of these people are going to reflect your state. If you want to get some money, okay? For example, I'm grateful I have $10,000 more. The money is not going to appear out of nowhere, guys, like suddenly next to you, okay? Somebody's going to give it to you. Somebody's going to urge you to maybe go to a casino. Somebody's going to give you a commission. Somebody's going to hire you for something, right? So there are always people, several people involved in our manifestations. So we manifest several SPs all the time, okay? There's your answer. Number two, can you tell us, is it possible to revise knowing somebody? They hurt me too many times. Yes. So the way you would go about this is remember the day you met the person. Let's say you met at the party, okay, last January. Christmas party, let's say. You're going to imagine how it happened. You're going to remember. And then you're going to revise the memory to your liking, okay? So you're going to see yourself not going to the party. Therefore, not meeting the person at all, okay? And also, the second part of the question, okay? Always double check with yourself. Do you want to revise not meeting them? Or do you want to kind of shift into a state where this person is totally different, treating you differently, okay? When you change, they're going to match the state and they will be different. So ask yourself this question first. Next question, guys. I've never heard of NLP. Can you make a video about it? I hope you don't mind. I'm going to answer this question in this Q&A for you guys because I think this is useful information. NLP stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming, okay? And it's a very common, you know, process or it's a very common thing in psychology as well. So we know, psychologists know, that people have programs or patterns that are running havoc in their lives. And we are doing our best to change that for our clients or for the patients, depending if you are doing law of assumption or you're doing therapy, okay? So by knowing that we have some beliefs instilled in us that are kind of creating these negative patterns in our lives and circumstances, we also know we can change these little programs, okay? So how people go about this, yeah, there, there's a, there are tons of ways you can go about this. You can do hypnosis, you can do subliminals. I personally like conscious techniques more. So what I like to do is 
I like to lull myself to sleep, affirming my new belief, okay? Let's say you have a negative pattern related to money, okay? Let's say you have a belief or you're running a state, you're thinking from a state of, you know, money runs out all the time. I can't get enough money to buy everything I need. Money's hard to get, okay? What you want to do is you can use a lullaby technique that I adore, for example, and you're going to, when you go to bed, before you fall asleep, you're going to focus on the new beliefs, okay? You're going to tell yourself, I'm good with money. I have everything I need. I have more money than I can spend. I'm financially free, whatever you want. And you're going to take these new beliefs into your sleep, into your dreams, as Neville said. And this is really funny, guys, or a fun fact. When you do this, oftentimes people report back to me that they had a dream of these new beliefs. They heard them in their dreams. I once had um, this, you know, kind of crazy experience. I had a dream about me telling myself my new beliefs. So try this, okay? It's a very nice technique for beginners, especially for people who are not that spiritual. They're not that into Neville. They're more logical. This is a very nice way of entering a state and changing these patterns, changing these beliefs. So do this. Next question. Could you please explain how we create people if creation is finished? Some people say we're not manifesting anything at all. And this is very confusing for me. I can understand why. So, uh, we are not creating people. And we're not alone in the universe. There are other people, okay? When you assume something, when you assume a state, that state comes with all beliefs, thoughts, assumptions, as well as actions. The people in your 3D are going to reflect that, match that. When I say reflect, I do not mean mirror, guys. And this is why a lot of people think, well, you know, they are a liar because you are a liar. So they're mirroring you. No. Nope. You can have an assumption I'm a very honest person, I am trustworthy, but you can also have an assumption, this person is a liar. I can rely on them. They're both going to show up, guys, okay? So just because you know yourself as a good person, trustworthy person, doesn't mean you don't also have an assumption that the person A is a liar and they're not reliable okay so creation is finished that's true we do not create out of thin air out of nothing and I don't know why you know recently a lot of people are against the term manifesting but guys manifesting in my opinion is the perfect definition for what we are actually doing here think about this the word to manifest when you look it up in the dictionary, right? It says to become clear, to make something visible, to make it obvious. And this is exactly what you're doing. When you are in a state of being, of being single or being rejected, the perception of your SP loving you and being there for you and you having this amazing relationship is hidden because of your state. When you shift your state of being, your I am, you manifest, you reveal to yourself this new possibility. So I hope you, you know, understood this answer. If you guys like Harry Potter, I know I'm a huge fan. There is this awesome charm they often use called Revelio, right? When they do this, they just reveal the object that was hidden, but it was there in the room the whole time, 
they couldn't see it, it was cloaked. The same thing happens here, guys. You have a state, an awful state, regarding money, relationships, friendships, health, doesn't matter. This state of being is cloaking, is hiding the possibility so you can see clearly the version of person that likes you, you having a lot of money, you having perfect health. When you shift your state, as I said before, repeating myself, I'm sorry, when you shift your state, you're going to reveal these possibilities to you. They're going to become apparent to you in your 3D world, okay? Next question, has anyone manifested changing when they were born or changing old photos? Yes. So, I personally changed my dog's age. He was getting pretty old at the time. He was 12, turning 13, and I wasn't ready to say goodbye. I was feeling a little bit anxious. I was having the negative thoughts of him, you know, getting too old. So, I decided to revise his age. We normally had, you know, birthdays for my dog with a little doggy cake with candles and the whole family would come by. So I imagined I revised my dog's birthday party. Instead of 13, I imagined 10. Some time has passed. I stuck to this decision. Some time has passed. I was talking to my dad one day and I was like, well, you know, I'm so sad, you know, my dog, the name, his name was Yuki. He was getting too old. And my dad was like, well, he's just 10. Poodles can lay up like 15, 16 years old. And I'm like, what do you mean 10? He said, yeah, he's 10 years old. And then we went to a vet for the annual shots. And the vet also confirmed that the dog was 10 not 13. So it is possible to change someone's age, guys. And we, when it comes to photos, I've never done it myself, but of course it can work. So what I would suggest you do is, there are two ways to go about this, okay? You can visualize a picture being different. Let's say there is a picture of you and your friends, okay? You can visualize a picture and instead of your friend you can imagine your mom in the photo okay every time you think of that paint that, that that picture the photo the second way would be you going back to that memory of you taking the photo let's say you remember you were um, at a lake with your family okay and your sibling couldn't be there for some reason, and you want to have a picture of you and your sibling on that lake. You're going to revise being there with your sibling, taking that photo together, okay? So try this and let us know what happens. Next question, guys. I'd love to see a video discussing how long it can take for revision to show up. I script every evening, every day for the past nine months, and everything still appears the same. My mental diet is pretty good. If I think about anything from the revision, I affirm visualize the desired story. I don't spend my time asking where it is. I'm curious what could be going on here. Okay, excellent question, guys. And a lot of you, especially when we work together, people come and the first thing they ask is, how long this will take, okay? So the answer is nobody knows. But what I can tell you for sure, it does not take nine months. So depending on what you imagined, let's say you imagined being married to your SP, but in the current 3D, your guys are in no contact. It can take nine months for the full manifestation to come through. So you might bump into them in a month, in two months, you are going to be dating again. In five months, you might move in together. And then in six months, they might propose. And then in nine months, you're going to have your wedding and be married to your SB. So when you have this kind of complex manifestations, 
they can take time, but it doesn't take nine months to see any kind of movement, okay? So what is going on here from, I don't know you personally, so I can only deduce based off of what you wrote in the comment. What could be going on here is you're trying, you're not deciding and being and doing any of this scripting exercise just for you, just to experience, just to remember. You're still stuck in a state of trying. I must do this every day, every night, three times a day, I think you said, right? That's trying. That's not being. That's doing your homework, not experiencing something just because you want to. So if I were you, I would ditch the scripting three times a day. At the end of the day, guys, it's always the question. The question is always, what are you aware of? Are you aware of having this or not having it? You can visualize 10 times a day and script morning, evening, afternoons, five pages, and nothing will happen if you haven't truly shifted your state. And how do you know you've done that properly? Well, your thoughts, perceptions, expectations, actions are going to be different because they're all going to match your new state of being, okay? So double check and be honest with yourself. What exactly am I aware of? Why is this time an issue for me? Where is my focus? Honestly, most of the time. Have I been revisiting the state that I decided? Did I stick to my decision? Okay, you got this. Next question, guys. Uh, what is I am? Is this God or our higher self? Well, I am simply said is your awareness. It's your being, what you are aware of. A lot of people, you know, even Neville Goddard call this God. People from law of attraction communities call it higher self. They're all valid terms for your consciousness, your awareness. But your I am is anything you are aware of in this moment, in the present moment. And don't be confused. When you affirm or when you make a decision who you are, who I am is, it doesn't have to begin with I am statements, which is something people often are confused about. Like they, they would be making a decision saying, I am rich. You can do that, but if it doesn't feel natural to you, it's not the lingo you would normally use, then don't do that. You can absolutely say, hmm, I'm so lucky I'm having more money, you know, every single day. My success is uncomparable in my industry. My salary has gone up, you know, 50% all of a sudden. All of this is I am. All of this basically means I am aware that now I have more money. Okay? So your I am, your awareness, consciousness, God, higher self, they're all valid terms. And one last question for today, guys. It's getting pretty long. I visualize every single day, but I keep having negative thoughts. How can I stop them? Very similar question to the one I answered before. Guys, this is not about math. It's not a numbers game. Unfortunately, it isn't. You can visualize 10 times a day and nothing can happen. It's not about how many times you do this. It's about whether you truly change yourself. When you truly change yourself, when you really shift your state, these thoughts, feelings, perceptions, even actions, right, habits, they're going to change as well. They're going to match your new state. So this is not something you should do by force. 
right? So if you have negative thoughts or feelings, let them be. You can dissociate from them. You can understand I am awareness. I decided who my new I am is. I don't have to worry about these thoughts, about these negative feelings, because they do not define me anymore. I make my decisions. Your I am, the consciousness, higher self, is way bigger and more powerful than any negative thought, feeling, doubt, fear, etc. So I don't want you guys to fight your fears, your doubts, even, even to flip them. This is all resistance. This is all coming from a place of being powerless. So leave them alone. Accept that they're there. It's just a residue of the previous state you were in for a very long time, probably. Dissociate. Remind yourself of who you are. And in time, these thoughts, negative thoughts and feelings, are going to kind of dissipate on their own. They're not going to come up because you're going to have new thoughts, new feelings, new beliefs that are going to match your new state, your new decision. So guys, I hope you found this video educational and useful. If you want to talk about your specific situation, I'm available for one-on-one coaching. And I have some exciting news, guys. Currently, because I'm new at Create Your Future, we are running a sale. So book a session with me, and I'm looking forward to seeing you guys soon. Okay? Bye, guys.